What makes a tropical island tropical? Could it be the magical forests, breathtaking scenery, the five offshore tax havens, or maybe the dictator? Because today in Tropico 6, we're going to be breaking the national economy with the power of disease. No, not curing it. No, not preventing it. And no, not protecting our own people from it. Just making an insane amount of money. So the first thing to do in Tropico is to customize our president. Someone who can lead our great nation into prosperity, peace, and hopefully massive wealth inequality. Of course I know him. He's me. We also get to pick one of many traits for El Presidente, giving him a different bonus. So of course I chose the best one. I also went ahead and customized our palace. We have the great gardens over here next to a giant boulder. So I've configured a custom random island to be generated. Most of the stuff is fairly normal. And the way we are going to win the game is by having $10 million in our treasury. So our main goal is obviously to make boatloads of cash. And what better way to do that than with disease? We have three difficulties. Only a harmless cough, diseases happen regularly, and the one we're playing on. I also enabled a couple other things that, yeah, I'm, I'm sure won't be problematic. So without further ado, welcome to Tropico, the amazing and grand island covered with resources. Uh, oh, that's not good. I'm sure that won't be a problem. But anyway, located with resources and all kinds of goodies for us to exploit. Right here is essentially our starting city center, and if I play the game, uh, you can see, you know, people are walking around, everything, that, that guy doesn't have a, okay, actually, all the men don't have shirts. And right over here is our president, who's having a great interaction with that fellow, probably, a. Uh drafting him into the military. At the start of the game, we are in the colonial era, which essentially means that in terms of construction, we can't really build things that are of high technology. So we're talking lumber mills, rum distilleries, and all kinds of other stuff, but obviously we can't build something like a nuclear program yet. And in the bottom left, you can see we have our main goal, which is to accrue $10 million. And of course, the way we're going to do it is with disease. But first, we do need to start building buildings and getting our industry up, because if we go into our almanac, we see that we have 69 unemployed citizens, and we are losing money. So of course, first things first, we're just gonna be greeting and looking at all the local rainforests, uh, by cutting them down. All right, great, so we've gotten our first quest, and uh, apparently corruption is really bad, so the solution to that is to build a pirate cove. I will pretend as if that makes sense, but we have to accept here, and then we also have something from the crown. Right now, our island is owned by the benevolent British monarchy. Sucks, I know. And in the bottom left is our mandate, so if we run out of time in terms of that mandate, we lose. By doing quests for the crown, we can extend the mandate and eventually try and rebel to kick all of them off the island. Hopefully. So by building this logging camp over here, we will complete the quest, and then we can extend our mandate time by another 18 months. As you can see, it just went up in the bottom left. Building a pirate cove is also very important, which is... <laughs> Yeah, definitely not conspicuous at all. Oh no, someone's living in the way of this road. I uh, I might have forgotten that we do have 81 homeless people in our colony of 111 people. We can build some residential things, a couple of bunk houses, uh, ooh, mansions. But unfortunately, our people lack this thing called money, so we do need to build these crappy bunk houses for now. As you can see, I've given them the prime real estate of being right across the street from the shack town. I treat my people well, said no one. But when our pirate cove finishes up, over here, we will complete the quest for the revolutionaries. But essentially, we need to keep doing these quests for the crown until eventually we'll have enough revolutionary support such that we could just break free. The other thing we need to do in order to actually make money is if I go into here, we can see we have trade. So this symbol represents the crown and this symbol represents illegal smuggling routes. The smuggling routes are mostly for import, so you can see the arrow going in and the crown is mostly for export. Right now, I'm realizing that I literally don't have anything to export, but you know, later we'll, we'll probably be able to give them some stuff and make a bit of money over here. Ooh, coffee is now trending up, and I think I built a coffee plant over here. Not sure why the British want that. Great, so we just got the quest for revolting against the British Empire, and essentially we just need to have an average revolutionary approval pretty high and have a lot of revolutionaries. Also, now that we have this pirate cove constructed, we can actually launch raids, where we can do minor things like looting bananas off the ocean and uh, stealing Stonehenge. I do also need to go over and do some research, uh, knowledge production, no income, where we can look through and discover great technologies like penal colony or employee of the month a.e. everybody works double shifts. So I will begrudgingly build a single library uh, and then probably not build any more education ever. Tricking people into voting for me is a whole lot easier when nobody can read. I was taking a look at El Presidente's mansion and failed to notice the armed guards all over it. 
and I thought to myself, you know what this country needs? More guards. Right, so apparently there are pirates attacking Tropico, and you can see him over here just running through, and, uh, you know, average citizens are... I mean, some of them are ignoring them. So, of course, I need to quickly rush into here and do the thing that I should have done a while ago and build a fort. Sure, it costs a crap load of money, and sure, I could have invested that money into making our people uh, slightly less homeless, but why would I do that? Well, it's a good thing that the pirates over here are just using their guns against this lumber mill and not trying to do anything else. Meanwhile, I have constructed an entire ass fort, trained eight soldiers, and have now sent out a battalion in order to fight the pirates. As you can see, our guns are, uh... Not the most accurate. Oh, oh, look at that. We got him after 70 shots. All right, so we're just gonna show mercy to those pirates real quick. And then realize that I have somehow lowered the unemployment rate. Didn't mean to do that. All right, so I've gone ahead and helped our revolutionaries out by fulfilling their quest and building a church. And of course, the reason for that is now I can go into my research and get church fees. Visitors to religious buildings pay a fee of $1. Also, we have another lovely group of pirates over here. Uh, we actually have two military squads, which are gonna go intercept them or I, I'm actually not really sure what's happening they're just kind of running around in the streets causing mayhem and now they're gonna try to burn down the circus great work guys you almost killed the clowns man I have no idea how we have 87% support and almost half the population is still homeless the game is even begging me to build residential buildings and honestly I just forgot right so we're at 57% in terms of revolutionary so very soon we're gonna be able to advance the next era which is the world war era and to get ourselves ready for that we do want to start are building mines. Now, obviously, we could build mines all over the place. We've got coal, we have gold, we have all sorts of different resources around the island. But the main things that we want right now are coal and probably iron. I also just researched the church fee, so we can go ahead and implement that. Thank you very much. Sure, by implementing a tax on all the churches, people won't be very happy, but, you know, it's, it's not like they were happy to begin with. Great, so we have enough support now to just declare independence and prepare for war. I could spend $15,000 and just buy independence. Don't know why I would do that. So in 720 days, the British Empire will invade our lovely island, and as long as we have enough defenses, we should be okay. Plus, I mean, I was gonna build more guard towers and forts because uh, later in our edict tree, we do get access to some, you know, slightly better uses for our military. Also, I love the fact that I can keep exporting to the British Empire, despite the fact that we have officially declared war on them. Actually, that's that makes perfect sense. Oh, dang, okay, I didn't realize the pirates just sail in here and kamikaze their boat into the side of the island and then promptly run over here and get shot. Oh, I also forgot to enact the church fee edict. There we go. I'd like to see how much money I'm gonna make off that. I mean, look at that. The fee income is racking up. We've already made $5 just cycling people in and out of church. $6. Oh, I also got a quest to do the rescue raid. It's, it's in and apostrophes there. Of course, if I go over and look at it, pirates will find castaways. On a completely unrelated note, here is a new cotton plantation. Now, I know that sounds bad. But trust me when I say it is something that we will desperately need for when we hit the World Wars era. Because the best way to make money from a deadly disease, no, it's not curing it, it's even better. All right, in just a little bit, the British Empire is gonna try and invade our island. I've built a whole bunch of guard towers and, you know, bolstered our military and apparently traded with the British to prepare. And now the only thing left to do is to wait and watch them invade. Oh, look at that, the British Navy. That's a, that's not a very impressive Navy. But that is a pretty considerable amount of soldiers. And of course, their first target is that they're shooting my church down. We do have a couple of guard towers up here, which are going to start shooting down at all of the British people. Unfortunately, I don't actually have more soldiers than them, but fortunately, I do have more homeless than them. Hey guys, I swear, the British have food. Jesus, they are really going to town on this church. Like, the, it's on fire, guys. You, you don't need to do anything else. All right, it seems like we've overwhelmed them with our wave assault. I don't know how many people died, but I'm pretty sure it was not in the single digit. Well, I suppose you did rather well for a bunch of savages. Now we can advance to the World Wars era, which will give us a whole whole slew of technologies. So the first thing we need to do in the World Wars era is that we get a constitution. In terms of voting rights, we have all citizens vote, yeah, you know, normal. Wealthy citizens vote, okay. Open ballot elections. Employees of governmental buildings vote for El Presidente regardless of their approval. I mean, don't mind if I do. Now we could go with pacifist state, militia, or professional soldiers. Well, 
I mean, militia, soldiers require no education. In case of military conflicts, each barracks will provide one militia squad. I mean, I have to make use of those 216 people somehow. Right, so now we can confirm the changes and bada bing bada boom, we have 10 years until the next election or election. And of course, the very first event of the World Wars era, a disease outbreak. Deadly virus outbreak around the world. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Because if I go into our industry, you see we have a new building, the mask factory. So by unlocking the blueprint, now I can start building mask factories. And uh, is that going to send me into debt? Uh, just, just, just a lot. And going into our trade, now we have all kinds of new trade things to work with. And better yet, in terms of heisting, we can steal the Hagia Sophia. I don't think I said that right. Prevent citizens from dying of bad health care. Don't mind if I do. And because our strategy is infecting the world and then selling the masks, it is absolutely perfect. We also get access to new edicts. And of course, the main thing we're going to get is that good old military police. So if I go into the trade here and then I go into good prices, you can see all kinds of things have ballooned in terms of prices, but nothing has gone higher than masks. The price modifier is plus 200% because of the virus. Meaning that if we just start mass producing masks and selling them like an absolute madman, we will make ridiculous amounts of cash. We're also gonna start getting dual demands from different parties. You can see here, we have the communists and the capitalists. We either have to build a bank or set the constitution on religion and state to atheist. Now, I don't think I can actually complete this one in time. So I kind of have to do the bank one, but I was, I was gonna do that anyway. So the only way for us to advance the next era, which is the Cold War, is to ally one of the two major powers being the Allies or the Axis. Which one we're gonna ally? I genuinely don't know. I'm sorry, I just got an event. Uh, to wait 360 days. That's it. That's the event. I suppose the game is not sure if I will survive another 360 days. Uh, where, where is El Presidente? Yeah, there's there's a decent chance he won't survive that long. Also, why, what happened to that building over there? Oh, crap. I just realized we actually have a protest going on over here. It's a recent healthcare happiness, and they're targeting the guard tower. There's literally two of you guys. This is, this is not going to work. Of course, the rational thing to do, because practically no one is here, is I'm just going to bribe them. And, and then the communists are happy about it. Okay, finally, this is what I have been waiting for. We have a mask export route and it is 400% price. So by locking this in at the highest volume possible, first of all, we make almost a half a million dollars. Not bad. But most importantly, we lock in the price at the ridiculously high rate. So even if something gets cured, we still make insane amounts of money. Right. Well, I didn't realize that the population has drastically dropped. It is down to 118 people due to disease deaths and bad health care. Maybe, uh, maybe I should build a clinic. Yeah, you know, I think I will do that. Uh, I, I've been neglecting to do it this whole time because I thought it was too expensive. Uh, meanwhile, it's literally just $3,000. My bad guy. Oh, please, please don't have another protest. Healthcare happiness on the fort. I can't even bribe the one guy there $500. I'm too broke. All right, I will promise to raise healthcare just happiness. Really Truly, happiness. definitely. I'll, I'll do it, guys. You can trust me. When have I ever broken a promise? Someone's legs, on the other hand. Oh, there's also now a fire raging at Tropico. I mean, that's that's fine. I, I don't have the money for a fire department. Oh, thank you, access for the foreign aid. I, I needed that money. I wonder where it came from. Oh, thank God. We built the clinic and now we are raking in the dough. Let's go. $20 fee income for visiting the clinic. 96 people in my colony be damned. Also just, you know, ignore that. It is a miraculous thing that people are continuously immigrating into my colony. Despite the fact that there have been so many deaths. Okay. You know, as soon as I built the clinic, people stopped dying. Maybe I, uh, maybe I should have done that. Oh, well. All right. I am rapidly attempting to fix the economic situation here because it's it's pretty bad. I had to pause most of the buildings we have in order to try and just keep exporting masks, but uh, even the dock workers can't actually work and get anything. People are no longer scared of the disease outbreak. Panic level decreased to green. I mean, on the bright side, you know, the deaths of they're not as bad. Oh, great. We're almost to 1918. And you know what that means? Election time. I have 17% support of the population. You know what? I'm going to make the executive decision and say, we don't need an election. Not this year, probably not ever. That does have some pretty big downsides, like everybody is going to start hating us now, but there is no way in hell that I actually win an election. So hey, just don't have one. Okay, you know what? As much as it pains me, I need to relive.
reload the save. And of course, the main change I'm going to do is actually build a clinic. And on top of that, I'm going to just immediately pause most of our working buildings besides the ones that are absolutely necessary. And then I'm also going to hire a bunch of foreign workers, all of whom could work at the clinic. Oh, hey, the, 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 the fire is back. And where is it this time? It is a shack. Okay, well, that couldn't have gone better. Oh my god! I just exported all the masks and it gave me $60,000! What have I been doing with my life? Right, well, it's time for me to use that exorbitant money and just hire a bajillion foreign workers. Who would have guessed that it is vastly cheaper to just hire random people from other countries to come in and work our cotton plants than anyone else? I'm also gonna try my best to actually give people apartments and real houses. Because unsurprisingly, dying from sickness is uh, a whole lot more common when you literally don't are homeless. Oh no, building destroyed shack. It, uh, you know, you wouldn't even know it was there. Okay, it seems like we've mostly stopped the decline in population, and as soon as this boat gets here, uh, I don't know how big the population jump is gonna be, because I have hired so many foreign workers. And there we go, another 19 people that are going especially right into the tobacco plant, uh, and also all of the cotton farms. Because, of course, that allows us to start producing even more mass, and making actually decent amounts of money. Money. And our population is, uh, you know, people are dying, but it's not as bad. I also need to build an embassy for our allies. Of course, the main reason for that is so we can ask them for money. Oh god, okay, it looks like the college-educated workers who were working at the clinic died. Well, time to hire new ones. I don't think there is a single college-educated person in the entirety of Tropico. So, you know, we, we could build some kind of education. And by education, I mean newspapers, so we could publish propaganda. Remember, kids, the problem's not real if I tell you it's not real. I'm also not even sure why I built this bank. I'm fairly confident that almost nobody on the island even knows how to count, much less read. Ah, of course, the next quest of the capitalists, export weapons. <laughs> oh, hey, I don't even know where this person came from, but uh, apparently someone is college educated and is now literally the only person who oversees the entire nation's worth of money. Sounds like a good idea. Right, so we built the embassy and I actually just realized that we do have a higher relationship with the Axis. So, uh, you know, uh, hey Axis, what's up? Finally, the communists and I can agree on something, which is to set the constitution to an atheist state, while also still somehow taxing people entering the churches. Also, I just realized the, uh, the Axis are not so smart with their money. I can praise them for $5,000 and then ask for financial aid for $20,000. Truly economy. Oh good, the Axis want us to sabotage the allies in a raid. I'm not entirely sure if this is something I should do, uh, pissing off one of the major powers of the world, but hey, I, I mean, I've got nothing to lose, except for 123, uh, 122 people. All right, first things first, let's also try and get some education going, because I am realizing that we're running into the slight issue that nobody can work any of my jobs. Apparently, being an ambassador requires a high school diploma. Of course, looking at politicians, I I wouldn't have guessed. Right, so the election has come once again after me, uh, you know, reloading my save. And I think it's time that we deliver the greatest speech ever. Now we could start with acknowledging an issue, uh, if I wasn't a narcissist. Then we can praise the, uh, well, I mean, the capitalists already like us, so probably the communists makes sense. We will blame the allies for all of our problems. I blame the government. And then promise an improvement in, uh, let's see, food, healthcare, faith. Oh, there it is, nothing. Oh, you know, I, I just decided to zoom out so I could take a look at the audience. It's, it's literally all armed guards. And then I think a police officer. Literally the only people here are uh, under threat of being shot. Also, I just realized my pirate ship completed their raid, or more specifically a heist. And did we actually successfully do it? Yes, we stole the entirety of the Hagia Sophia. So now if I go over here into World Wonders, oh, look at that, it cost $10,000. And we could just plonk this thing in the absolute most inconvenient spot possible. Also the, okay, the warehouse house is on fire. Oh my god. Well, we stole an entire religious building that is of priceless value, uh, and now we're charging people to go in. No need to thank me, citizens. Right, so the election is actually here now, and I could, you know, slightly pre-adjust the ballots, but literally no one opposes me, despite the fact that so many people have died in this election. We are getting more immigrants coming in, which is fantastic. The, the healthcare is back online, I mean, sort of, and even the Hagia Sophia is completely full. And we overwhelmingly won the election. I, I, I'm surprised. Even more surprising, despite the fact that I literally didn't promise anything. Oh! 
Oh my god. Okay, so it looks like the Axis has actually found the cure to the disease, which means our profits are going to take a bit of a hit because masks are not going to be nearly as valuable. But on the flip side, because we locked in the rate at ludicrously high, we're still making four times the price we should. Also, apparently the cure recipe is iron. Don't know how the Germans figured that one out. Either way, to actually manufacture the cure, we have to build a cannery real quick, and then we can start producing. Oh god, there's a fire raging in the fort. I don't- how did you guys even do this? Like, did someone just pour kerosene all over the stone walls and then light it on fire? Honestly, impressive. Unfortunately, to get our cannery running, I do need to build a power plant, which is really, really pricey. But with all of our exports, we should be able to start making at least enough money. Boy, do I feel good today. Stocks soared overnight. I love it when I wake up richer. Also build a prison. <laughs> you know you've done something right with the economy when exporting masks makes you more money than just straight up exporting the cure to the disease. I love the economy. Well, I didn't think it was possible to cool $33,000 for mask exports, but we are turning around our city right now. We have built a cannery so we can start to produce the cure. And I've also done my best to develop the Tropican infrastructure by putting a coal power plant where we grow all the food. Truly the Tropico of our dreams. So in order to expand our operations, I am going to start building a path all the ways up here. Sure, it's probably not very efficient, but then again, what is in this city? Over here, we can start exploiting some lovely things like, I, you know, I said some oil. Actually, apparently there is oil directly under the high school. Sorry, kids, school's out. Right, so we are now able to start producing cure because I have built an electric substation over over here and hopefully my citizens will start getting cured and of course right as i do that there is a protest over here about faith happy okay hold on a minute guys let me negotiate and by negotiate i mean uh send in the military okay i i don't like how many people are protesting here oh my god someone just got shot okay now we're at medium rebel threat i i don't think i should have done that on the bright side i mean no more strike also the newspaper is now on fire so that okay that might not have been a good idea and the next thing we're going to do in terms of heists is steal the Taj Mahal. Now, when a person dies, they normally accrue various taxes from the government, but because we're benevolent, we don't take a percentage. We just take the whole estate. I also feel like it's worth it for us to go into our edicts and implement something that I think we've all been looking for. Employee of the month. Employees of mines and industrial buildings work double shifts. Congratulations, guys. I know you wanted this. I also forgot that I can adjust our constitution slightly. In terms of labor policy, we have early retirement, a happy childhood, a life Life's work. Children are required to start working at age 14 and cannot retire. I mean, those coal mines aren't going to work themselves. All right, it looks like the rebel threat is decreasing slightly, which is nice. Apparently, we have uncovered two of the rebels. One works at the bank. Okay, I can't, I can't do anything about that. They are literally one of three college-educated people on the island. And the other one works in the newspaper. Right now, we don't have many options in terms of dealing with them. We can bribe them, kill them, and, you know, later in the line, send them to space. Right, well, as much as it pains me, I do need to build a college because uh, we we have so few doctors that people are just dropping. I mean, our biggest import is literally doctors because we have none. I'm also going to build a customs office because uh, it just increases export prices. That's literally it. Luckily, even though we barely have any doctors pretty much anywhere. Oh, that's not good. Well, it looks like volcanic eruptions are happening. Yeah, you know, we could evacuate. We could purchase fireproof suits. Uh, let's sell burning postcards to the tourists. Fortunately, it doesn't seem like the volcano is close enough that it really matters. Uh, I mean, it's just kind of spewing crap all over the place. Well, as much as the allies hate us, they're going to hate us a lot less when I begin exporting them cure doses at exorbitant prices. Oh my god! $68,000! Why wasn't I selling pharmaceuticals earlier? Right, so this seems like the perfect time. We've developed a lot of our area pretty nicely, so now I can ask the Axis for an alliance. Doing this is essentially the way for us to advance to the Cold War. So now if we sabotage the allies four times, we will be able to have an alliance with the Axis and get through the era. After the Cold War is then the modern era, so we do want to get through the Cold War as well. Because in the modern era is where all the real money starts to get raked in. Oh, okay. It looks like we're actually back to another election time. And again, we can't 
We can't acknowledge any problems we have, but it's actually mostly fine because our citizens don't totally hate us. And because of our system of government, all government employees must always vote for us no matter what. So obviously if everyone's in the government, you could see what happens. Of course, I'm gonna do the normal thing of literally just not promising anything. And of course, it's only the military people who were clapping. So another mechanic that I haven't really been messing with is our Swiss bank account. Over here, we can go to the broker who gives us all kinds of deals and all of them are essentially the ones that we have to use with our slush money. And what better way to get slush money than by building an official residence of a foreign official? Is it legal? Probably. Is it ethical? Dubiously. I also forgot to build a prison, so, you know, we'll just do that. Okay, thank God. We were actually running out of space on this mask export, which is literally all of our money. But hey, the United States has come in and said, we'll buy those masks off you. Also, we do need to do a little bit of remodeling. I'm, I'm sure nobody will mind that I am destroying all of their houses and replacing them with luxurious flop houses. Oh, I didn't realize, I think we just stole the Taj Mahal. So if I go over here to our landmark, there it is. Oh, it's beautiful. So beautiful that I'm going to demolish every single building directly in the center of the city. Country houses, apartment buildings, bunk houses. Nah, you don't, you don't need this. Okay, apparently it's still too big. But there we go. I have made enough space and now the Taj Mahal will sit directly across. Oh, we're just, we're literally just gonna throw it on there. But now whenever a citizen dies, you can see, oh, look at that. We already made a thousand dollars because someone died and just gave us all their money. Or gave. That's a, that's a bit assuming. Our support has never been so high. I, I honestly don't know. The constitution could be rescinded. Well, don't mind if I do. Actually, I, I think everything looks good. I mean, we have open ballot elections, a you know, blatant voter fraud, an atheist state, and we force children to work. Honestly, the ideal society. Election is a landslide, Presidente. And we've also easily won the election, which is fantastic. Now we just need to finish sabotaging the Allies a bunch of times in order to uh, advance to the Cold War era. So out of curiosity, how many people are actually educated? Right, we have 253 uneducated, 64 high school, four college. Oh my god. It just dawned on me that, oh, wait, I built a college a million years ago. Gee, I wonder why it's not working. I love looking around at some of the various policies we have in the buildings, like for our minds. Work mode, almost human. Which scares me because there's another one that is the profit protocol. The duration of work shifts is increased by 38. Okay, that's especially confusing considering I'm literally working people 24 hours a day. And a protest has started. Where is it? It's in my, in the capital. Oh, that is, that is not good. Now, I know everyone's angry about the whole faith happiness, but here's $3,500. Go away. It's also about time that we get ourselves an army base, which should hopefully provide us with garrisons of tanks. I also forgot there's a building we can build over here called the Trade Institute. It's, it's generally pretty normal. Um, allows us to manually provoke market trends, AE, insider trading. I am just importing college workers like absolutely crazy. There's, okay, people are quitting the clinic because they want to work at the trade institute instead. That can't be good. Oh, looks like we have another protest gathering in front of the fort. Let me guess, religious happiness. There it is, 21 protesters. Okay, I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to just shoot my way out of this one, or at least minus 22 workers would not be good. Fine, fine, I will build a church, but I'm still gonna charge you money to visit it. I'm also gonna start building a secondary whole town over here, mostly for, uh, <clears throat> you know, no specific reason. Oh my God, I keep having these rebellions about faith. I, how, how do people even feel? Okay, yeah, people are people are not very happy. Oh, oh, it's 16 happiness. I'm not really sure why it's so, oh wait, I know why it's low. And by that, I mean, I'm gonna ignore that because now we are allied to the Axis. So we could either wait 10 years or fight six allied invasions. Also, uh, if the Alliance is broken, you will instantly be invaded by the opposing superpower and lose the game. Excellent work. Oh my God, $151,000 from a single freighter. We've also started to export oil which is great because it emits pollution, makes more people sick, and artificially drives the price of masks up. Oh god, the pandemic is over. Uh, well, you know, that that's cool and all, but okay, so we can no longer export cure doses. Although as unfortunate as that is, we have locked in super high rates for trading with both the allies and the Axis for 420% above average, all for exporting masks. So as long as we keep doing that, 
we should be pretty good. I started building a new town over here in order to just grow tons and tons of cotton. Uh, and then I realized the grocery store literally has only masks. I don't think people can eat those. I mean, they could try. Ah, yes. Another 10 years, another pointless speech. Uh, promising nothing, acknowledging nothing, blaming everybody, and praising no one. Well, you know, this is kind of a record turnout in terms of our speeches. I mean, nor hey, there's even a kid here. I don't know who in their right mind would let a child listen to us talk. I am continuously surprised that I keep winning these elections and have such massive support when a hundred people are still homeless. Housing happiness is at an all-time low, and I'm pretty sure one of our main makers of money is dead people. Okay, and it looks like we are about to get to the end of the war. I've just skipped ahead like 2,000 days. Perhaps you could harbor some refugees who bear absolutely no resemblance. I don't know how I feel about that. So now we have progressed to the Cold War, which means we can add a whole bunch of stuff to our constitution. Interestingly, for ecology, I'm actually going to do zero emissions because it's kind of just really good. And in terms of separation of powers, we, we obviously want true separation. And by that, I mean I get all the power and you get none of it. Now, in terms of trade, this is where things get more interesting. Because we've lost all of our trade routes going from one era to the next, all of our masks are no longer really doing anything. Now, eventually, there will be another disease that spreads, and so that will mean that we can do masks again. But for the time being, we just want to store all of our masks and export none of them. We're now also dealing with the Eastern Bloc and the Western powers in terms of diplomacy. So in order to progress to the modern times, we need to do one of three things. First, establish a tropical paradise for tourists. No. Second, join the nuclear club, which I will do, but later. Or the third one, borrow a major international landmark. And you can imagine exactly which one we're doing. So the first step is to build a spy academy. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that we had uh, rebels that were actually... Oh, they're attacking the airbase and they set someone's house on fire. Oh, there they are. This is quite the fight. So now that we built our spy academy, looking very inconspicuous, we can go into raids and over to the spy academy and try heisting something. Now, I already picked the wonder that we're gonna heist, and you'll see which one it is shortly. Right, so we got a disease, a harmless cough, quote-unquote. And believe it or not, if we go into the price of masks, we can scroll down and realize that it has gone up ludicrously. So something interesting that we can do uh, as it pertains to the disease, if I go into my edicts, I can actually find something called global disease combat effort. Now, you might think that means that we're trying to cure the disease that's going on. But what it actually means is that I get to boot out three citizens every month to cause confusion and delay the world's search for a cure. Why would I do that, you might ask? So I can sell more masks. 126,000 for my export. I, 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 we are just making so many masks. Not to mention that I'm doing my best to just sabotage the global efforts of curing the disease because it is making so much money. Plus, as soon as we get to the modern era, we can start building pharmaceutical companies and and if you thought masks were profitable, oh baby. Now in these trying times, it seems like there's one thing that my citizens want. Uh, it's not a cure, it's not healthcare. It's very obviously a childhood museum of me. No need to thank me citizens, just listening to the people. Okay, I did not realize that that was extremely close. We only just narrowly won that, uh, that last election. Now of course, in order to win even more elections, we do need some very specific things. Like a ministry of propaganda unlocks the arrange accident citizen interaction. Don't worry, I will put it directly across from the prison. Oh yeah, I also forgot that uh, we've been exporting uranium. I don't know how much money that's making us. Hey, you know, it's it's not too bad. $2,000, uh, almost $100,000 from masks. Excuse me? The Western powers are laying siege and they're attacking the rich people. That doesn't add up. Oh wait, I see. They are literally commencing a land event. Also, there, there are four people on those boats. That, that seems like overkill. On the bright side, we do have our own methods of dealing with an invasion. On top of the fact that I have drafted an entire militia force of pretty much just average people who are going to wait here for the landing. Well, here's to hoping that we don't totally die. Well, uh, you know, this isn't going so well, especially the fact that I think my tank is going to explode from small- Oh, no, it didn't. And of course, all of my military units are immediately running over to secure the mansion. Also, I, I realize in the midst of the entire foreign invasion, they set fire to another shack. Oh, finally. Okay, I've been waiting for this an 
Eastern Bloc trade route with 400% mask income. There we go. Plus, we have one over here for a pretty high percentage of tobacco income as well. Uh, yes, I love getting dual demands where the capitalists want to increase the free market power by building a golf course. And the communists want to dismantle the market through becoming the best country on Earth. Also, it's 1951 and we still don't have electricity uh, in any houses. So I think I will probably try and fix that by giving yeah, just a little bit of electricity. Okay, and, and now I just caused the mass electricity shortage. Good, good job. Yes, you know things are going well when the hospital doesn't even have electricity, but the mansions next to it do. Okay, and Tropico is yet again under attack, and this time I think by foreign powers once more. Oh no, they, these are gorillas. My soldiers are really, um, they're not having a good time. <laughs> Penultimo is talking about dismantling a giant copper buttocks. I think that means exactly what I think it does. That statement doesn't make much sense. So if I go into a row of wonders, there she is. The Statue of Liberty. Immigrants arriving on Tropico are 100% happy and approve of El Presidente. And I have just the spot out here as we airdrop Lady Liberty into our tilted towers. Which means we get to progress to modern times. Beautiful. So this is the last age in the game. And it means that we have a couple new laws, uh, personal rights, a security state, and for healthcare. Obviously everyone has to pay for it because the wonder that we got makes it so no one could die from healthcare. So signing our beautiful constitution, now we are in the modern era and we get access to a whole new slew. Okay, there's still no power. Okay, at the citizen's demand, I have solved the power issue. You can see where everybody lives and um, you know, it's a very, very safe location. Sure, some of these children might be born with a few extra legs or arms, but I mean, that, that works for me. So now that we have an insane amount of power, we can go for the most profitable thing. Is it mining? Is it oil? Is it a synthetic food lab? All good guesses and all wrong. Oh God, I've been trying to fulfill this housing happiness demand by electrifying all of our houses. This is 51 of 53. I don't think we're gonna make it. Oh, it got all the way up to 52. And okay, well, uh, everybody hates us now. Actually, that's, that's not really a surprise. Also, I forgot, now we have have the essential equivalent of um twitter and i can respond to the different things people are saying in order to get standing so if i just give this a positive response at all the oh yeah it's up okay this is painfully like real life actually Wait, how is the Statue of Liberty on fire? What what did we do? I can't even send a helicopter. I I don't even know if we could put this fire out. Ah, yes, this, this is a good idea from the rebels. They are planting a bomb at the nuclear power plant. Oh God, that, that can't be good. So I built a bunch of pharmaceutical companies and they are making some pretty big dollars over the course of their lifetime. But if you believe it, the actual most profitable thing I'm finding is literally just office buildings. I am constructing office buildings buildings absolutely everywhere I can because they don't require anything to export. They just need power and college degrees and they make me a pretty stupid amount of money. $2 per base efficiency on each employed citizen on the island. So as long as I'm randomly employing people in whatever jobs, and thanks to my labor policies, making everyone work from 14 by law, we are earning a pretty stupid amount of money by literally doing nothing. Not to mention the mask income, which is also super crazy because we've just been exporting masks. I have something like eight or nine mask factories. I'm exporting nothing else. Also, the other thing I find kind of ironic is that to work at the pharmaceutical company, uh, you just need a high school degree. <laughs> oh my god, in a post-election show of kindness, El Presidente has decided to give all those who voted for the opposition a 10-second running start. I mean, that's completely ridiculous. Five seconds at most. Oh yeah, I forgot that uh, to deal with the rebels that keep spawning, I, um, well, I built an aircraft carrier. <laughs> works pretty well. Finally, my person being a narcissist is actually coming in clutch as I can build statues for slightly cheaper. I mean, what could be more inspirational than this? Ah, yes, it looks like those gorillas are back on it, but, uh, Power to the taxpayer dollars. Okay, thank God. We have made our first million dollars. And well, the way I made it is by establishing five offshore tax havens around the Statue of Liberty. Each one decreases the relations of every single major power. So we got a Chinese company, a EU company, USA company, Middle Eastern company, and a Russian company, which give us a total of minus 100 relations, but they make a crap load of money. I am now making $200,000 from rent of office and 
the offshore offices alone. And then to offset it, I'm just praising each of the superpowers by using money, and that's, you know, keeping the somewhat happy. So I also built a bunch of cryptocurrency mining things. You know, we're mining Tropicoin. Very real, trust me. But more importantly, uh, I could actually buy NFTs for coins. Purchase the Great Wall. Note, this doesn't remotely imply ownership of the actual Great Wall. Not even a piece of it. An ant living on the Great Wall has more ownership. This is nothing. Christo Redentor, you own the idea of the statue on paper, on a digital paper. That's what you actually own, nothing else. Now, unfortunately, the fact that we are bombing our own citizens uh, and are also acting as an offshore tax haven for every corporation in the world, people do not really like us. Slightly more fortunately, uh, I built a nuclear bomb. As long as we have at least one nuclear bomb, no one will invade us. Well, I've been grinding out about $4 million so far. We're almost halfway there. Uh, and then I realized that we're being invaded by the United States. Luckily, we are just bombing them as they're coming in. And I should have enough units ready to defer. Actually, I'm not entirely sure about that. There's like six people here to fight the entire United States military. But, um... I mean, we do have bombers. Okay, it looks like we uh, we did it. We, we beat the US military. Luckily, we do still have this nuclear bomb, so no one is going to massively invade us and try and kill us. Okay, we have made it to $6.3 million, countless civilian casualties as I watch us literally fly planes into the office district. All right, at this point, we are getting so close, except there are so many rebels attacking us now. So like the good Samaritan I am, I'm going to discreetly assassinate their leader and by discreetly assassinate I mean gun down on the steps of the palace just about no faction will actually trade with us at this point. We have pissed off every major power. And the only thing keeping us even somewhat safe is the nuclear bomb I have stored right over here. And now that we are at 9.99 million, I only need to wait just a little bit. And there we go. We have gotten $10 million, which leaves only one thing left to do. Let's try testing this nuclear bomb. So not only is Tropico a massive mound of wealth that only I own, now it is a massive mound of wealth that is in a radiated wasteland. Well, reloading the save game immediately beforehand, you could see the beauty of our island. That is, several complexes of office buildings, multiple pharmaceutical office parks, and several nuclear reactors placed conveniently in the residential zone. If you've made it all the ways to the end and want to support El Presidente a little further, check out my Twitch where I stream consistently every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for watching. See ya.